We have seen in the last years some of the best CGI heavy movies and a good portion of them were created using side effects Houdini. In this video, I will share with you the process of how some shots and sequences were made using Houdini in some of the most iconic movies of the last decade. Thor Ragnarok In creating Thor Ragnarok, Framestore delved into years of experience in effects and simulations. Key shots in these final sequences were made by relying on Houdini, including fight scenes between Thor and his sister. The bridge required a little bit more effort to show the areas breaking apart throughout the shots, and they used Houdini to do this progressive fracturing and simulation. The shots of the guards in the final battle being taken out or destroyed also involved Houdini simulations. When breaking the D-guards in Houdini, the main challenge was making a character fracture from an animated match and they achieved this result by taking the character and putting it into a rest pose. The character was then fractured and the pieces were skinned back onto the original character with a point deformation. For lightning shots, they specifically placed them bolt by bolt. Generic lightning shots were centered more closely to the guards in the fight scenes. Framestore developed a tool that automatically create bolts on Thor's body and armor, with an artist able to choose how many and how quickly the bolts could move. Houdini was also used for all the heavy lifting destroying effects when it comes to the Asgard city. Framestore used in-house software to do initial default fracture of every published building, and those pieces were fed into Houdini RBD setup which produced a destroyed version which environments used to create an increasingly raised Asgard as the sequence progressed. Moana Houdini was used a lot for this movie by Walt Disney Animation Studios. For example, a collection of rigs were developed for the water character, and in calmer moments, for example, effects used a more procedural approach with noise functions and internal bubbles. In more active scenes, the use of dynamic-based rigs was more prevalent. Moana High Five in the Water is an example of this. Typically, they use this method whenever they require the character to break apart, and the secondary animation added a physically correct component to the character. In another example, fire and flowing lava emanated constantly from the lava monster body. These effects were handled procedurally in Houdini, which meant they could generally be automated. Using some Houdini's built-in contacts like chops, they were able to create effects that could automatically react to the character animator's choices. Men in Black International Double Negative was given the task of working on one particular sequence in Men in Black International, where the twins face off against the film's two heroes, Agent H and Agent M. Double Negative sold the energy effects for the twins using Houdini, which came about via a combination of particle and fluid simulations. They started by investigating astrophotography of galaxies and nebulas. The most important visual difference between cosmic dust and the earthly dust is the presence of millions of stars. So they tested both particle and smoke simulations and found they could get the detail they needed with particle renders and the motion they needed from fluid simulations. And they ended up with a sort of nebulous volumetric thing with tiny stars scattered throughout. The Mag the mech features giant sharks, large-scale ocean action scenes, and some pretty nifty submarine gliders. So much of the film required water interaction that visual effects were a key component in getting, helping to craft the VFX with Sony Pictures Imageworks which utilized Houdini in a big way to deal with all the different kinds of water simulations in the movie. Houdini's flip and white water solvers were used to deal with surface water and water interaction. Although Imageworks customized the solver to deal with the scale on a shot-per-shot -shot basis, to get a sense of air resistance and vaporizing, they needed a hybrid flip and gas solution to achieve the look. Essentially, for large-scale impacts, water quickly starts to behave almost like a gas, and the force causes particles to behave without surface tension. The hard part was seamlessly combining that with bodies of water where that cohesion was still present. Ant-Man and the Wasp Double Negative Studio was responsible for working on four sequences in the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, and the main one when it comes to effects was the car chase sequence, and the challenge for Double Negative was the diversity of the work they had to do because there was a good amount of VFX work that needed different methods of working on it. One of the big effects they had to do in the car chase sequence was the macro water effects. 
Ant-Man would come flying on a flying ant, jump onto the windshield wipers, and the antagonist ghost enable the water spray from the wipers. They had one artist kind of take a more traditional flip sim particle approach, but in the end, when it moved on to the artist, they took a procedural approach to it. This allowed to have macro water without even doing a simulation. Black Panther Visual effects artists in this film seem to have found more and more ways to leverage the power of Houdini to deliver original imagery via distraction, weapon effects, character-related simulations, vegetation, and more. Method Studios employed Houdini to develop cymatic shapes in various elements of Wakandian life and warfare. Much of the Method Studios cymatic work and other Houdini effects for Black Panther were handled out of the company's Vancouver office. The use of Houdini and effects simulations in general in Vancouver has grown rapidly. The production of Black Panther itself started with just 5 effects artists and ballooned up to 30 to get the work done faster. Toy Story 4 many challenging sequences where effects, animation, simulations, and procedurally generated effects were necessary to tell the story. Many of those sequences were made possible via the further adoption of Houdini at Pixar. Crucial Rainstorm Rescue scene at the start of the movie was a major Houdini sequence, while the tool also found use in scenes involving vegetation, cobwebs, dust, and animated carnival lights. The team used the Houdini Renderman engine to create a procedural workflow for modeling the falling rain in the atmosphere and in the ground. This let them modify 100 shots with a small number of files, in the span of just a few minutes. That also meant they could do very minute changes on a large scale that would have been not worth it in more classic workflow. Then there was the vast and dusty environment of the antique store. Here the set extensions team developed a Houdini process to generate dimensional, granular environments such as dust and small debris. Houdini was integral in generating initial distribution, simulating a history of character interaction, and facilitating flexible artist workflows. Adding to the ambience of the antique stores were the presence of many cobwebs, which were generated using a simulator in Houdini. This imitated spiderweb behavior to build complex cobwebs structures. Artists designed areas for cobwebs and scatter initial lines from which digital spiders would jump, altering existing structures and generating new web lines. Fate of the Furious In the film's third act, Digital Domains Vancouver and Los Angeles teams contributed visual effects to several key shot scenes, including a daring and explosive chase. The production filmed as much of the sequence as possible in Iceland and on blue screen stages. However, it was always planned that Digital Domain would match the action with VFX. And the creation of the ice-filtered explosions and debris and huge fiery bursts was something the studio handled with the help of Houdini. When the submarine breaches the ice surface and sends ice and vehicles flying into the air, the shot production at Digital Domain began with a low-res rigid dynamics body sim in Houdini in order to get a bite off on the timing of the ice breaking and how it would interact with the cars driving on top. Simulating the ice and selling the correct amount of weight was Digital Domain's most difficult challenge. To get the final look, Digital Domain's looked at reference icebreakers. Some submarine references existed too, but only the vessels lightly pushing it through the icy surface. So they detonated explosives under the area of the ice that had cars being pulled using cables above. It was filmed from a lot of angles at a really high frame rate, so it was easy to study a lot of the details and elements they needed to recreate using Houdini. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse has proven to be one of the most innovative animated features released in recent times. Sony Pictures Imageworks was tasked with using 3D animation combined with more of a 2D aesthetic to bring the story of the latest Spider-Man to life. That meant that Imageworks had to adapt and even break the existing animation pipeline to deliver the film. And in doing so, the studio still used its go-to tools including Houdini to realize the computer-generated imagery. There are several moments in the film that involved explosions or particle effects, all of which have this mix of 2D and 3D elements to it. They had tried initially to do some smoke explosions using simple, using simple particles and spheres, and then having them erode or evolve in interesting ways using solvers and shaders. While the results looked really cool, they never really hit the mark and definitely never felt stylized or hand-drawn enough. 
so they created sprite sheets for all the animations that we're going to use. This is actually a common technique used in games where instead of loading a specific frame of animation for every card, you only have to load a single image that had all the frames on it already and you module the UVs to switch frames. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.